The deeper you look into the Illuminati story, the worse it gets. Which is really surprising considering how bad it was last time we talked about it. What began as false accusations of plagiarism quickly escalated into terrible accusations against Illuminati about her behaviour and how she is towards other people, which includes former members of Sad Milk, a collaborative channel that Illuminati was part of along with some other creators. We've already talked about the Twitter threads done by these creators talking about Illuminati and her past behaviour. We've also discussed Illuminati's response video to all of this, which was quite badly received mostly because it was just two minutes of apologizing for the plagiarism thing and then the rest of the video was throwing everybody under the bus and making really bad accusations about them. And we have looked at the clicks video response and Wonderstruck's video response. And very importantly we've also discussed how Illuminati has been claiming that people are trying to silence her voice. However, she then went on to send a cease and desist order to Wonderstruck, which is an attempt to silence somebody's voice. I have videos on all of those topics, they're linked in the description, so check them out. And yes, I do know in the last video I forgot to link the other ones in the description. However, I don't have an excuse, I'm sorry, I just forgot. But this time they are linked, so do check them out if you need updates. As for now though, we have some very important updates. We have some updates about legal stuff, as well as a new response video which was made, and we also have new information from Illuminati's ex. And I'm gonna tell you now, I found the stuff about her ex quite difficult and quite upsetting. But we're gonna get to that in a bit. Firstly, I want to talk to you about the legal updates, which is that, as we mentioned, Wonderstruck was sent a cease and desist order from Illuminati. We've already talked about this in length, we don't need to go more into it, but what we do need to know is that now, Wonderstruck is not the only one to have received one of these. So Illuminati has officially sent me a cease and desist. Best part is she cites parts of videos which I had no part in, and demands I make a public apology. I haven't even made a video yet. So Oz Media, who has not made a video yet about Illuminati, who has only made a Twitter thread and appeared briefly in Wonderstruck's video, has now been sent a cease and desist, presumably for something along the lines of defamation, even though he hasn't really said much yet. And keep in mind that Oz Media was the person that Illuminati claimed to be heartbroken about in her video. I just want to say thank you for always being my support through all of my ups and downs. I know that a lot of these personal situations in my life left me very thin and sometimes irritable. And I want to say thank you for supporting me through it and talking me through some really hard times. Your support and your friendship meant more to me than I think you'll probably ever know. I guess she went from sadness to anger really quickly. Since we're talking about defamation, just need to clear all my bases and let you guys know that this video is an opinion beast. Beast? Beast. <laughs> this video is an opinion piece based on speculation and opinion. Everything said is alleged. Somebody responded to this tweet and said, That said, look into anti-slap laws slash protection in your state with a lawyer. If you're lucky, you may be able to dismiss her case rather quickly if you can prove it to be a slap. If you're wondering, a slap suit is a strategic lawsuit against public participation. There are lawsuits intended to censor, intimidate, and silence critics by burdening them with the cost of legal defense until they abandon their criticism or opposition. These are most commonly civil suits for defamation, which is likely what Illuminati was threatening if Ozmedia didn't follow the cease and desist order. Luckily though, Ozmedia responds to this, saying Colorado has high slap protection. The thing is though, we still don't know if Illuminati is planning to sue these creators, or if she is just sending cease and desists in order to intimidate people into silence. But we do know from her ex that she can be quite lawyer happy, which again, we'll get into in a bit. Firstly though, we need to talk about one topic. One Topic is another former member of Sad Milk who had written his own Twitter thread when all of the height of drama was going down, discussing some of Blair's negative behaviours and things that she did that he deemed wrong. And a lot of it was backing up the claims made by other creators. 
Now he has made his own response video to all of this as well. Unlike Wonderstruck and the Clicks videos, One Topic's video wasn't full with receipts and screenshots. And he says right off the bat that this isn't what he's gonna be doing, he just wants to chat about his opinions and his experience, and some of the misconceptions that are being thrown around. And for the most part, this is just him backing up things that he said in his Twitter thread or corroborating the stories of other Sad Milk members. But there were some very, very interesting points that I think are important to discuss. Firstly, he brings up Illuminati's response video and some of the ways that she misrepresented Sad Milk and the former members of it. And actually, he says that he thinks the video should be taken down because of the false narrative being painted in it. This false narrative mainly revolves around her not properly outlining the accomplishments that were made by the members in terms of work. And also, according to him, fake accusations that payments weren't being made for editor fees. This seemed to be a big point of Illuminati's response where she was talking about how she didn't have any help, she did everything herself, and the burden of fees often fell on her because people just weren't paying. And according to him, this is just simply not the case. And to be honest, I think at this point, it's hard to trust Illuminati over somebody else, anybody else, just because of the history that we've seen of things that seem to be like lies. And according to him, she even misrepresented the way things ended with Sad Milk, which again is something that other members have said too. It's very important to note that he points out that he did not call for this meeting and neither did the clique. The two of them had brought up things that needed to be discussed by the members, but they did not call for the meeting. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, this is to do with the meeting that was had by the members of Sad Milk, where things seem to have escalated. Illuminati said she didn't want to have this meeting, but she was forced to. And others claim that during this, she was screaming at people and telling people to shut the fuck up. Very professional. But it was during this call that he decided that he would need to leave Sad Milk because it was just unhealthy for him. Because his participation in the project was being seen as antagonistic, Illuminati seemed to be taking things badly from everybody, even when they were trying to help. So he announced that he would be stepping away. And interestingly as well, one topic is also joined by the click in his response video, where the click reads out his leaving message, his parting message to the group. I have taken this last week to think things through thoroughly and realized during the past time and especially during the Monday meeting that a lot of priorities and ideas for Sad Milk have shifted. It is always fun to see a product move forward and see your friends be invested and creative. However, I also feel like I was in the minority in the meeting and that is perfectly okay. Everyone doesn't have to agree on everything or do the same things. With all these changes, Sad Milk is heading in a direction that I simply cannot follow at this time. You may have noticed through my other platforms that I have decreased my width and activity in many places, such as the podcast, my ASMR channel, I stream less, etc. I realized that my life was getting incredibly isolated where I sometimes didn't see another human for three days in a row and didn't leave the house. Being the extrovert I am, this has started to affect my mental health negatively and I need to drop some things to make life work. Hence, I can't ride with you on the current path Sad Milk is on. I wish the best for the channel and it has been a blast to do something like this with like-minded people. I do still consider everyone here close friends and I look forward to talking with you guys in DMs or other servers. I don't plan on having a public announcement made, just let it fade out smoothly with a new style of content that might actually happen naturally. Love you all deeply and thank you for letting me partake in this project. So this kind of clears up anything that may have suggested that they were kicked out. Apparently when this was going down they talked to some of the mods to try and figure out how to leave Sad Milk without causing a stir among the viewers or causing any kind of upset. And as well as this, Illuminati hasn't spoken to him since this. But despite the way that things ended with a pretty nice message and trying to do things smoothly, rumors were beginning to spread about them. And some of these rumors were even furthered by Illuminati herself, who said things like all they did was just show up to recordings and that she did absolutely everything else, even said that they were cruel. And I understand being upset if friends leave a project that you're all a part of, but I think part of being a mature adult is learning to just accept these things and move on and not take them personally. People might not always be able to make the same commitments that you can make. Other people have different things going on in their lives. And if people are finding that something is negative for them and they want to step away, then that's fine and you should accept that. And in fact, people don't even need a reason. People are allowed to just step away. 
and that's okay. Of course, there are gonna be times where there's exceptions to this when things are handled badly, but as long as things are handled well, then you should allow your friends to do that without trying to hurt them for that. And it seems to me like a lot of this is just her feeling like the victim in this situation. In a situation that didn't need to have a victim, it was just a situation. But speaking of her potentially wanting to hurt the others for this, he does discuss the alt accounts as well. If you've forgotten, this is Illuminati's alleged alt account where she was spreading rumors about former members of Sad Milk, specifically about the click, saying things like he was saying the N-word or the or slur all the time, even though these were things that he had said as a young teenager and had later as an adult addressed among other things. One topic says that a lot of these tweets from this alleged alt account seem to be driving a wedge between his and the clique's friendship. One of these posts was even baiting people to leave his Patreon, saying, I'm so glad that I left his Patreon, I would never support somebody like this. Which at this point is targeting somebody's income. And if everything said by the former members of Sad Milk is to be believed, then one topic was being targeted just because he dared to leave the project because he couldn't do it anymore. His income was being targeted because he left a project. It's just absolutely unacceptable. And it is quite sad listening to him talking about this because he says that at first he didn't want to believe that it possibly could be her, but that it was just such specific behavior and just sounded so familiar. I can imagine it is hard to believe something like this, that a former friend of yours would do something like that. I think anybody in that situation would have a hard time with it. But to make matters even worse, a few months after he left Sad Milk, he found out that private information about the group members was being shared around maliciously online. He said some of it were things that were shared offline, that were only shared in private work groups or in one-on-one -on -one conversations, which I think is very interesting because although he doesn't say it outright, it could mean that these were one-on-one -on -one conversations with Illuminati, allegedly. And some of this information wasn't even shared at all, which is extremely concerning. And according to him, all of this was mixed in with fabrications. So some private, personal information was being shared, some of it true, and some of it completely made up. So you wouldn't know what to believe. And Oz Media even confirms that he witnessed some of this. There are just a lot of boundaries being broken here. But unfortunately, along with a lot of the things that we've been saying about her recently, this seems to be a pattern of behavior. Swoop recently did a video on Illuminati and all of the controversy that is going down at the moment. And in this video, she had dug up four year old videos from Illuminati's ex. Videos that everybody completely missed. And in it, she also spoke directly to Illuminati's ex, Azathan. And through both Azathan's own videos and this interview with Swoop, we found out a lot of information about their relationship and about Illuminati's alleged terrible behavior. I have seen your fuck bitter and the bullshit you've been spewing on there, you fucking asshat. Because God knows why, because you're bitter about a fuck break up because your cash cow fuck left you. Like, fuck off. The two of them had apparently been dating for two and a half years. And during that time, they had broken up a few times. But since he was with her for so long, he saw a lot of her behavior around YouTube and how she acted with other creators. She was still doing Reddit content when they were together, but she was unhappy doing it. But she wanted to dominate the space. She wanted to be a huge YouTuber. And when Or Slash, another creator, started to grow rapidly, she was very unhappy about it. If you don't remember this situation, I did cover it in another video, but this was a creator who was also doing Reddit content who was growing very, very quickly. And as a result, Illuminati made a video accusing him of using subbots. But according to Azathan, she planned to keep going against him. She wanted to ruin him and she was completely obsessed. She even had a plan to create a new channel and put subbots on it to compare the growth patterns, which was going to cost her about $4,000. She was prepared to pay $4,000 in order to ruin somebody. And sure, if somebody is using subbots, that's not great, but you don't need to go that hard on it. Like at the end of the day, what does it concern you? 
unless you're obsessed with being the top creator in a certain space, unless you're extremely jealous of anybody else's success. And if that's the way you are, you have no business being a YouTuber. The thing is though, the insights that he gives us into Illuminati doesn't just have to do with the way that she reacted to YouTube or to other creators. He also gives a bit of context around how she behaved towards him. And it's honestly really upsetting. There's just a huge list of things that she did to him which are extremely questionable, if not abusive. And just to list some of them, she had hacked into his ex's Tumblr account and found evidence that she had cheated on him. Fully hacked into his ex's account. Why would you be hacking into anybody's account? And why did you need to find this evidence? Is it to make him more loyal to you? Is it to make him feel insecure? Is it to hurt him? Or is it because you had some kind of vendetta against the other person? What is the reason for doing this? It was not your relationship. Stay out of it. And also, don't hack into people's accounts. She also planned to take him to Vegas to confess her love to him, but she had a backup ticket in case he didn't say I love you back. She was planning to send him home again from a trip that she had planned if he didn't immediately say I love you back to her. And it is quite normal at the beginning of relationships when somebody says I love you that the other person might not say it immediately. You might be at two different places and sometimes people need more time than you need to figure out their feelings. And that's normal and that's natural. And we should allow people the space to figure that out. Not decide, if you don't say this thing back to me right now, I am sending you on a plane home and I already have the ticket. It's just a bit controlling. During one of their breakups in 2017, she made a video discussing the breakup and gave a lot of information about it. This is an extremely invasive thing to do and it really just puts the other person on blast. And apparently she wouldn't let him spend time away from her doing things on his own or with other people, which is just straight up emotional abuse. He said that she would punish him if he did these things, if he spent time with other people or alone or doing something else that wasn't with her. That is disgusting. If you're in a relationship and your partner does not let you spend time alone, does not let you spend time with other people, or demands that all your attention be on them, that is not okay. Even if they don't outright say it, if they just do subtle things like maybe they ignore you for a while or they punish you in some way like what was allegedly happening to Azathan, then you need to start thinking of if it's time for you to leave that relationship because you are being mistreated. And I understand that that is not safe for everybody to do just at a whim's notice. There might be planning and time and preparation that's put in place for that, but you need to do that for yourself. And I also understand that there are varying levels of that and sometimes there might be a slightly less serious version of this where something like having an open conversation might help or potentially couples therapy. And those are routes you can look at too. But from what I'm hearing about this specific situation between Azathan and Illuminati, if this did happen, that is emotional abuse and it's not okay. And it only gets worse after they break up. There was somebody who had been threatening to dox Azathan, and this all happened while he and Illuminati were still together. Sorry for the weird flick, my hair was in my eye. It still is, Jesus Christ. And he had spoken to her about this, she was fully aware of it, and she condemned this person. But after they broke up, she decided to collab with them. What else is that if it's not malicious? And she was also going around claiming that he was planning to release intimate photos of her, which he said absolutely was not the case, and she had no reason to think that. But she had already called a lawyer about it, according to her. There seems to be a lot of lawyers going on when you discuss Illuminati. And this, to me, is the absolute worst part, because there was a call between him and Illuminati. A lot of things were said, and it was quite a difficult call, but in it, she said that he was beneath her and said that he was mediocre and a burden. And what makes this so terrible is that these were the words that he had used just a few months before that to describe himself when he attempted to take his own life. She threw that back in his face. And we can see that in her own response video to all of this controversy, she openly shared somebody's side note as some sort of gotcha. So even though Everything discussed about the Azathan situation is alleged, legally speaking at least. We already have evidence of her on her own channel throwing stuff like this back in people's faces. So it's not that hard to believe that she could have done this. 
And there is so much more. These are only the main points of what he said about her in both his own videos and in the Swoop video. And this is what I mean when I say that the more you look into this, the worse it gets. And the worse of a person it looks like she is. She went from seeming to be petty to seeming to be outright malicious and full-on evil to being an abusive person. So truly, I'm sorry that I and many of the other content creators on here missed this situation when discussing Illuminati. These videos are four years old and most of us had no idea that it happened. And I really, truly hope this is as deep as it goes. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Please let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. I'd like to finish off just a little bit more lighthearted because this was quite heavy. So for the last like 20 minutes, I've had my cat here. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear her. Um, me being able to do this, by the way, also shows that my shoulder is better for those of you who know about that situation and were wondering. So as well, to make things a little bit easier to digest, please let me know in the comments how you're doing. Do you have any news? If you have anything you'd like to say in the comments about how your week, day, month is going, do let me know. My other news is that I finally got new glasses, which like, I can actually see uh, myself in the camera thing now, which is amazing. I can actually see, that's great. Um, I just don't wear them for the recording. <laughs> but I got new glasses, so I'm very happy about that. That's my little update for you guys about how I'm doing and how things are doing. So let me know how you are. Of course, like, comment, share, do all things I'm supposed to ask you do at the end of the video, including following me on social media. I am Bangelina Scott everywhere. Would really appreciate if you follow me on other places and also subscribe to me here uh, for more videos and turn on notifications really appreciate if you do that really really genuinely does help me out a lot if you subscribe so do it thank you anyway most importantly though i hope you have an absolutely wonderful day and i'll see you in the next one bye